Yeah. Uh, so speaking about open source, that transitions quite nicely into talking about patch package. If our viewers don't know what patch package is, a package that helps you edit your node modules and then use those edits. Uh, how, how about you explain it, David? Yeah, so if you have a problem in one of your node modules, let's say um, you're working on a React app and you're using a particular component library for a button, and that button does not have any way to customize the border radius. You can just go into that node modules folder, find the package, edit the border radius, and then make a patch file for that package with, with my tool patch package. And it's really simple. You just type patch package and then the name of the, uh, the NPM module. And then that patch file will be saved to your repository and you can commit it. If you have like a tiny bit of setup in your package.json file, uh, then the patch will be applied for anyone who just installs their node modules by running yarn install or npm install, and they'll get the border radius. Yeah, it has wonderful UX, uh, like such, such a simple API does it all for you. You don't really have to think it's, it's really nice. Yeah, thanks. Uh, the current project that I work on is rolling with about like 14 or 15 patches. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, once you open that can of worms, like you, you go there more and more and more. Yeah. Same with our projects. When I first created it, some people were like, this is too powerful. Like you're just going to end up with all these patch files and they were right. <laughs> they were right. Do you try to make pull requests out of your patches usually, or is for the most part, is it like that border radius thing where it's, you want to customize something that you know, won't get merged upstream. It's a mix of the two. Very often it's, it's for packages that aren't being maintained anymore. And so you go to the GitHub repo and you look at the pull requests and there's, there's a bunch of pull requests that maybe even solve your issue from five years ago. They're just not getting merged. So you make the fix and then you move on with your life. And because those packages never get updated, there's no maintenance burden. And then, yeah, for other things, like the original issue that patch package was created for was to add support for loading TypeScript files into the React Native bundler. And that was very much a case where after creating uh, some tooling, which was basically like a custom version of what patch package became, I went to the React Native repo and made a pull request for that and eventually it got merged and we could remove our custom little patch package thing on that project. Uh, so yeah, a, a mix of the, a mix of both. Yeah. I recently used patch package for exactly the same thing, uh, to modify the types. I feel like that's probably one of the easiest start out use cases for sure. We use this library called HLS JS and they had typings for the full version of their code, but not the light version. So all I did was create a patch where I renamed the file. And then went on with my day. It was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. that's that's often the the same sort of use case that I have. I've been working on some tooling for this note taking software called Obsidian, and I discovered this library written for someone by someone in that community called Monkey Around. And the whole thing is this: this is for like monkey patching. You know, if you need to take some private API and wrap a function around it, like it like handles that use case and uninstalling your monkey patch and stuff really cleanly but like the types were not right. And I was like talking to this author, but like, you know, I put in a PR about like updating these things. And he's like, I'm not really sure about this. It's like, sure, it's more strict and more correct, but like, eh. And I'm like, well, that's fine. I have this patch, so I'm good. You know, and it's, yeah, it's, it's nice. Uh, when, when you were building this, did, were there any alternatives at the time? Were there other packages trying to do this? Or uh, did you view this as like a completely new and novel idea? That's an interesting question. So the idea came to me kind of subconsciously from someone that I was working with at the time. He's actually my manager. And he was working on like a proof of concept for performance optimization for immutable JS. Do you remember that library? A library for immutable data structures in JavaScript. It was fairly popular back in 2015, but I, it's, it's fallen out of favor for sure. And he published his kind of research as a NPM project where he had to make a change to the internals of immutable JS in order for his kind of other code to make sense and like his performance measurement code to work. And he did that by creating a patch file for the node modules folder. 
And I just kind of saw that and assumed that that's what everyone does when they want to change what's in the node modules folder. He had like a bit in his readme that says run git apply patch file and it worked. So I just kind of absorbed that. And then it was like a year later when I had this problem with React Native and I wanted to add TypeScript support. So yeah, it's, I, I didn't find any other tools that did something similar. There was one, I think, which was for applying patches to package folders. I can't remember what it was called, but it, it just wasn't the same thing. It didn't have anywhere near the level of UX. It didn't even seem to be used by anyone. So yeah, I think it was novel at the time. I've definitely seen that uh, pattern of applying patches to something to make your code work in the wild. I contribute to a package called Package, where it'll take a Node application and then bundle it into an executable for different platforms. And then the way that it actually does that is by applying patches to the C code for the Node.js driver. And let me tell you that maintaining that is is crazy. <laughs> like the amount of knowledge you have to have to be able to modify Node.js to do this whole other thing is is just mind blowing. Yeah, that sounds insane. It, it is, uh, yeah. I, I definitely got into trying to contribute to that project a little bit before I looked at the code and then I saw that in the code and was like, well, I'm way out of my depth here. <laughs> <laughs> Have, haven't written C-like code in quite quite a while. And that's how we learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I also had the idea to try to create a, instead of a patch package, a patch pull request, but uh, that has lots and lots of hurdles that are hard to deal with. <laughs> what would that do? So like, it just like the idea of like, I just want to edit my node modules and get a patch. And then the next step is, oh, I just want to edit my node modules and get a patch and then also open a pull request with that. But uh, you guys can see where the natural hurdles come in. Lots of, lots of compiling in the JavaScript community. It doesn't make that bit easy. Yeah, no, it's really difficult. That came up a bunch of times in the patch package uh, issues. People were suggesting that as a feature. And every time I was like, oh, I really want to figure out a way to do this. Even even if it only works for like 30% of packages, but there's beyond the fact that packages are compiled for the most part in the JavaScript ecosystem, um, there's like auth issues and other stuff that just makes it really tricky to do. The only way I could think of doing it is like source maps, but like that sounds that sounds a, like a hell I don't want to put myself through. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. <laughs> While we're talking about DX, you did add something fairly recently that while is not like as much of like putting a pull request, it is pretty cool. So, you know, talk a little bit about the like issue creation, the automatic issue creation that you added to patch package. Yeah. So that's a nice kind of, uh, gets you half of the way there in that when you create a patch, you are given the option to run the command again with a command line flag, which is, I think create patch, dash dash create patch, and sorry, no, dash dash create issue. And what that will do is open a browser tab with the contents of the patch that you created encoded as uh, a query parameter in the URL, which GitHub will then use as the issue body. So it opens an issue with the body already pre-filled that says something like, hi, thanks for making this project. Uh, I ran into an issue and this patch fixed the problem for me. And it lists the patch in a rich diff format. This is, this got a lot of attention when it was first announced and people have been using it a lot as well. I haven't looked at the issue lately, but I made an issue where, that is linked back to by the, um, the template issue. So like most of the time when people create these issues from patch package, they are indexed on this one issue on the patch package GitHub repo. And you can see all the times people have found it helpful. I thought that was some clever telemetry for that feature. Yeah, I have, I think, Fred K. Scott on Twitter to thank for that suggestion. There was another thing that I was thinking about recently that sort of like ties into this idea of like, well, more about like, it's more, I guess, it's more about maintaining patches because it, as you get into a project and you're like patching a bunch of dependencies, sometimes it, you can forget why you patch dependencies. And I'm pretty sure that you have some recommendations in the patch package repository to say essentially, hey, like add some comments <laughs> to this section of code <laughs> to say why you did the thing. 
Um, and and I've been like bouncing around my head sort of semi recently because I'm I'm doing a few more patches. Is like, is this the thing that we could sort of like make a little bit more of a guided experience on? And what would that look like? It's still not an easy thing, right? Because you don't know where you're making the patch and what the semantics are and like there's there's a lot of like in order to automatically add a comment and i think this this ties back to the, the typescript things that you're doing right like in order to add a comment you need to know is a comment valid generally when we're talking about like the things that you're patching and source it's usually not a tsx file or a jsx file right it's something that's already transpiled but it could be it could be you don't know any anybody can ship anything <laughs> node modules really um, but anyway a fun thought i discovered recently that react native will actually load typescript source files for you these days and like i forget which libraries it is but one of the cool cool stack libraries is shipped with typescript that gets loaded at dev time which blew my mind yeah it's a, it's a wild world out there <laughs>